Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we're gonna look at how you can update parameters inside of your Power BI reports. That's coming up. If you're here for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos coming from both Patrick and myself. All right, so you've created a Power BI report, you integrated some parameters inside a Power Query, and you published your report to the service, how do you update those parameters? The answer for a long time was that you couldn't. Once you set them in Power BI Desktop, you publish that to the service, they were static at that point. A great example that I see used for a use case of parameters is server and database name for your connection info for your data source. And so from a deployment perspective, if I wanna push that out and I wanna have a dev test QA production environments, and I have different connection strings for each one of those environments, I've got to manually do that in Power BI Desktop and then publish that all up to the cloud. Well, that gets a little cumbersome if I want to automate some of that. How do I do that? I just want to publish it to dev once and then copy all that stuff over, but I can't update those parameters. Well, I've got an answer for you now. And what's the best way to do this? That's right, let's go over to the computer. Okay, so I've got a report here. I, I just put together a simple chart. It's nothing special from a report perspective, but what is special is if I go up to edit queries and I go to edit queries again, if I come in, this is in the Power Query editor. And from here, I can go to manage parameters and I can see all the ones that I've created. And I've created two here. I've got server and I've got database. One thing to understand in terms of being able to update these parameters from a service perspective is we have to define the actual data type for these parameters. So I can't use any as part of that and I can't use a Boolean item as well. So it's gotta be like an int or text or something of that nature. Otherwise they'll appear grayed out and the API calls that you make, if you wanna do it from an API perspective, will give you an error. So be aware of that, you may hit that problem. I'll show what that looks like in the UI uh, and then we can go from there. Okay, in this case, I've actually selected text as the type for the parameters and I've done that for both the server and the database. And I published this to the service. And so we can go take a look at that. So I'm in my sales group. This is the group I published it to. And if I go to data sets and I come down to my parameters report, I can go to settings of that data set. And then we will see the option here, parameters, if parameters are available. So when I go and expand that, I can see that these are the values that were actually set. And the reason I can edit these from the service perspective in the web portal is because I set them to a text value. So I can change these to any value that I want, go and update that and everything will be good. Now in this case, I've got a gateway set up to use my on-premises data gateway. And what we can do here is if I set the value, let's just change this value. We'll say new adventure works DW 2014, we'll hit apply. We're now changing the value of that parameter. It's pretty cool. All right, it's set up, everything looks good. Oh, except now my gateway is not selected. And actually if I come back out, let's refresh the page. So it pulls back all that metadata again. We'll get the data set, we'll go back to parameters, we'll go back to settings. And now when we look at the gateway, the gateway is grayed out. And that's because the database name that I set it to is not defined within my gateway. So I still need to make sure that I have the right data source to set up from a gateway perspective if I need to use a gateway. All right, so we can change this back. And then once it's set up again, I can go back, refresh the page, and then go back. My gateway is back to being selected because that's what I had previously, right? All right. We're on the same page. So now let's go back. I'll show you what I was talking about before. So let's go into the, the parameters. Well, we'll go into manage parameters and I'll change the type here to any for both of these. All right, it's good. Okay, I'm gonna republish. Yep, we'll save it. Push it back to the sales group. Yep. Got it. Now if we go back to the service and we refresh the page again, go back to data sets. Now because I've changed it to any, now that I've go, go into parameters, it's gonna be grayed out. So I can't actually update these values. So if you ever get into a case where 
the text boxes are actually disabled, so you can't actually update the text that's inside of it, chances are the type of the parameter is not correct, so go check that out. So in this case, it's because they're set to any. If they're set to Boolean, that will also happen, so they need to be something like an int or a text. It's outlined in the documentation, so be sure to check that out. So now let's go back. We'll just update this again, get them back to a working state. All right, magically, just like a cooking show, it's back to the way it was. We're now back set to text values. So we looked at how to do this through the UI. What if I wanna do this programmatically? We do have a uh, API available for you. It's called Update Parameters. And let me jump over to my PowerShell window. I have a PowerShell script here. I'll have a link down below to where you can go grab that from. And in this case, what I'm doing is I've got two parameters that I need to set up. I've got my group ID and my data set ID. We can get these from the URL. So if I go back to where I was before on the data set screen, I can grab my the grid for the group and I can gra grab the grid, grab, I can grab, I can grab. I can grab the grid for the data set and the group directly from the URL. And then I can copy and paste those into my PowerShell script. That's good to go. Uh, you'll need a client ID as well. So there's some instructions here on how you can set that up. You need to register an app inside of Azure Active Directory. And then this part gets the auth token that we want. Here, it's gonna set up your group structure. You don't need to worry about that. The body is where we're gonna really care about this. So this actually sets up the structure for the parameters that we're gonna update. It's gonna get converted to JSON. Remember, we like JSON, he's a good guy. So we're gonna list out all the parameters that we need to update for the particular data set. In this example, there's two parameters, right? I've got server and I've got database. And so I wanna list both of those out in this block and then add those values that I want. And there's things you can, you can get creative too with programmatically setting those up. So if you wanna pull those from a database and then plop those in, you can absolutely do that in a PowerShell perspective. You'll have to modify the script to do that though. In this case, they're just the values are just hard coded, so you'll have to update those. Okay, so in this case, I've got both. So I'm gonna leave server alone and I'm gonna have database change that to new AdventureWorks DW. And then we're gonna uh, build out the URL that we call. So it's the update parameters API. And then we're gonna actually make that REST API call. So let me clear the window here. And then we're gonna do it again. It's already logged in, so I'm not gonna have to type that in. And then boom, it's done, it worked. So if we go back and we refresh the page and we go look at our parameters, we'll see that we've got the new value. We're also gonna see that the gateway again is grayed out. Remember I said that the there needs to be a data source set up in the gateway for that to be available. And so, that's it. I mean, we can use the GUI to update it. We can use APIs to update it. Now, I, I talked that this is available. In this example, I'm using this for server and database for my connection information for my data source, but it's not limited to that. So I can use parameters from a query perspective and I can use it in other spots inside of my Power Query syntax. So I, I can get creative with this and I can do things on the fly that I need to. Now, remember though that these parameters are used for everyone that's touching this report. So it's not a per user parameter, it's a global parameter that I can set. So it works really good for server and database connection information, uh, or if you have a templated report that you wanna plop in for different groups, you could do something like that for a given parameter. If you're having that report maybe off to different app workspaces or different customers, if you're in an ISV type scenario, this can become very handy for you. All right, what do you think about that? Do you guys use parameters? Have you even taken a look at this update parameter ability inside of the service that's available to you now? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.